you know, casually accepted all this. But who was it that coined the word the military-industrial complex and beware of it? It was Eisenhower that told us about that. So there's every reason for us to think seriously about, you know, what, what we really believe in and what conservatism actually really means. You know, in 19... In 1956, I, I was in college, but I, was, I thought a draft was coming because uh, the uh, French and the British, uh, you know, got into a fight over the uh, Suez Canal with the Egyptians. The Egyptians wanted their canal, running the canal. So I was worried because I thought I'd be drafted. I wasn't drafted for 10 years after that, but I thought I'd be drafted because they came to Eisenhower and they said, come help us, take care of us. You know, they're taking this canal. And Eisenhower said, I'll have no part of it. But back a hundred years ago, especially Ron Woodrow Wilson, what happened in this country is we took freedom and we chopped it into pieces. We don't think of freedom as something unified. There is only one kind of freedom, and that's individual liberty. Our, li our lives come from our Creator, and our liberty comes from our Creator. It has nothing to do with government granting it. If you want small government to protect liberty, that is well and good, and that's what the founders believed. And that is exactly what the Constitution uh, was written for. But if, if we have some group over here defending, oh, economic liberty is good, that's right, we do, except a Republican president said, we're all Keynesians now, and we've been living with the Keynesian philosophy and economics. They're still all over the hill. And how many people on the hill are saying, and the Fed? <laughs> but personal, personal liberty, if our liberties come to us as individuals, they are not collective. They do not, freedom does not come in groups. You don't have freedom because you're a hyphenated American. You have freedom because you're an individual, and that should be protected. But I do not believe freedom can survive, and I do not believe we as conservatives can contribute much if we still think freedom only comes in pieces, that you can protect economic liberty but not personal liberty. Sure, I imagine everybody in, the, in this crowd would say, yes, protect our right of free speech, protect our right to our religious values. But as soon as it comes to putting something in your mouth or in your lungs, you say, you don't have enough sense to decide what you should do, so we are going to use the heavy hand of government to come down and protect you against yourself. But we have gone a long way from the dictates of the Constitution. The Constitution, of course, says that only, uh, only on the declaration of war can we go to war. But we're in perpetual war now in every country in the world. It's going to last a long time until we go bankrupt. That is what I, I believe is happening. But we have done a, a few other things that aren't conservative, as far as I'm concerned, endorsed by both political parties. And one is that we have now endorsed the principle of preventive war. Another term for preventive war is aggressive war, starting wars because someday somebody might do something to us. That is not part of the American tradition. <laughs> Just last week, there was a hearing on the Hill, and the subject of assassinations came up. And the administration uh, was there, and they explained that, yes, they indeed do endorse the idea of assassination. And then they were asked, would you endorse the idea that we have the uh, obligation to assassinate American citizens? And the answer is yes, they do. They, they claim that they have the right to assassinate American citizens. Now, what, what are they... What are the conditions? Somebody in the administration, we don't know exactly who, makes a determination that that individual is a threat. And if he's a threat, then he can be assassinated. Now you say, well, he's probably a bad guy, and he probably is, the people they pick. They only have three. But the principle is important. Someday there might be six or eight or ten. 
What if that would have been the fact that Eugene's dad might have not have been put in prison? He might have been assassinated because he was a threat. So this is not just casual talk. This is not radical left-wing liberalism protecting civil liberties. This is protecting the whole integrity of our country and our Constitution and the rights of the individual. We have now, we now have, as a country, have accepted the principle that habeas corpus is only worthwhile in a limited fashion. Some people don't deserve it. If they're designed as a threat, they can be held in, for unlimited time in detention. It can be secret detention and still susceptible to torture. That is not what we're all about. We're, we're much better than that. And we as conservatives have to realize that we have to bring this back together again. Good conservatives can believe that personal liberty is of the utmost value. We all probably more easily agree the free market is a good way to go, and yet we still have a lot of people who have to reject the notion of regulations and benefits and bailout for Wall Street and the Federal Reserve System and paper money. All these things have to be worked in. But there is nothing wrong with you being a conservative in saying the Republican conservative tradition not too long ago, as recent as year 2000, we won elections by saying we shouldn't be the policemen of the world and that we shouldn't be nation building. And it's time we got those values back into this country. I believe we're on the verge of something very significant. I've spoken out quite a few times on college campuses in the last couple of years, and the reception is fantastic. And they want the whole package. They don't want bits and pieces. They want their personal liberty. They want their economic liberty, and they don't want dependency on the government because the government has failed, and they know they're not going to get their Social Security, and they don't want perpetual war. They'll defend this country. I have more support from the military than any other one candidate during the campaign. So let us, let us take this opportunity. Let us take this opportunity. And though for those of you who disagree, all I ask you to do is think seriously about it. Think about it and read about it and study it and put it in context and say, maybe that has a point. You know, during the campaign, the presidential campaign, you know, off in the corner, laugh at him, all this stuff. Then all of a sudden, the crash that I was predicting and talking about and said we were on the verge of and we were beginning, it came, and then all of a sudden now, Fox News Networks had me on their TV about 60 times since the campaign was over. But, but let, me, let me finish by saying one reason why I really like this idea of bringing freedom together and why freedom works is I really think it brings people together. I do like different people to come together because freedom doesn't challenge people's personal values. They don't challenge their religious values. They only say, come together on your terms as long as you don't mess around with me. The one thing, the one thing that, uh, there are two rules that I have. One is that I want change and I want a lot of changes, but I preach nonviolent change. I want resistance to the current uh, system. But the other thing, the other thing that I have to keep reminding myself and I'll remind others that in the process of, the, of us pursuing our goals, that we should remain tolerant. People who disagree with you or look different or have different views, we have to allow freedom of expression. That will bring us together. Otherwise, we can't win. So I, I thank you very much. Uh, 
for, for this opportunity to visit with you. I hope, I hope it is challenging because we're in challenging time. But quite frankly, if we do the right things, we can pull out of the economic mess we have and we can be better than ever. And I believe that's what this type of an uh, organization and group of people coming together because I know you want what is best for America. And if we work together and are a bit more tolerant, I believe we can achieve it. Thank you very much. Let's sing it.